where all this data is gathered. Uh, we have then uh, curated a list of 200 companies with their stock market stickers, so the symbols, and then, you know, uh, scrape the data uh, with a little bit of M code in Power Query uh, and then presented everything in, in, in a Power BI dashboard. Right, so um, I have used a couple of uh, maybe interesting um, examples here. So first of all, you know, uh, since this is a public dashboard, it's important that um, you add certain usability or user experience um, features uh, to your dashboards. So this is something that I'm doing here uh, almost in, in all of our dashboards, for example, you know, just having a help button and in the latest version, I have actually animated the help button. So when you're seeing this, you see this button here, it has a, a, a slight like animation effect. So you see now it has, uh, you know, just to draw a little bit of attention so that people are actually click here. And once they click on the button, uh, what happens is, you know, I get this sort of uh, help overlay that will, you know, explain where the data is coming from. So, uh, so this was done by by me and my colleague Pascal Kiefer that I've mentioned from the KT uh, K Team Solutions, and uh, yeah, and then you know, and these are these are just plain um, Power BI buttons and bookmarks now that I have used. So, you know, I you know, if I click here. Um, now I will present, you know, like the features, how to use this dashboard. So this is, you know, maybe the first feature of, of, of this Power BI, Power BI report. Um, as you see, I have actually used animated GIFs. So small, little small animations just to illustrate, you know, how to use the, uh, you know, the date slicers and so on for the first time users of, of Power BI. And then, you know, you click next, uh, then, you know, I just simply uh, illustrate every feature on this dashboard, you know, how to change the number of, of companies that are displayed in the dashboard and then next step, uh, you know, uh, you can actually filter, uh, filter, um, you know, individual companies uh, from, from the list, from the charts. Um, you can click, you can click on a um, title, on a name of, of one company just to get the details. I'll illustrate this later on. And uh, yeah, you can resize all of the charts at once as I have already shown here. So so this is a nice onboarding feature. Um, I will show you how this, this was done. Then of course, you know, there are like, this is another little button here that just simply opens uh, a big uh, scroller, uh, sorry, a big slicer where you can uh, like, you know, filter out certain companies so they are not uh, like Saudi Arabian, for example, if I click now, it will go out of, of my dashboard here. Okay, it, it takes a few seconds, of course, to, to, to redraw, but I mean, given the fact that there are like two, 200 charts, it's actually quite fast, I guess. Right, so this is the filtering. Of course, you can change the number of charts. So I could just display like, like I don't know, 15 charts. Now I only have 15 charts here. Okay, I resize it, and then if I if I click click on um, on a title, then I get uh, a zoomed chart. Uh, you know, a bigger chart for this particular selected selected uh, company. All right, so this is the um, uh, this, in short, is is this dashboard, and um, um, I actually just wanted to have a really, you know, interactive um, interactive session. Just present how I did this. So now I'm in Power BI desktop. Let me know if you will have any kind of questions. You know, feel free to to ask. Um, just type in type in the chat, and uh, uh, we'll have a. Q, Q and A Q and A session, right? So, so this is now the um, this is the dashboard. Um, it actually has so it has a few elements here on the top. So this is a simple you know text box. This is the uh, slicer. So these are all regular you know Power BI regular Power BI slicers. Uh, this is a button here, the help button that opens uh, the uh, opens another um, um, you know text box and a few pictures and so on. This is all stored here in, um, uh, it's all bookmarked. 
So I'm using some bookmarks here. So if I click here, you will see that I have a few bookmarks, right? So, so this would be, um, if I click here, this is like the default state, which does not have the, uh, the additional elements. And then, and then this uh, on this button, so this is a normal Power BI button that actually has um, this actually it, it has an animation behind it. So this is at the moment. This is actually uh, the uh, animation. I did not really click on the click on the button. So but if I click once again now, this is the button. So you see the trick how to animate this this button here is that I actually have a, a button and then behind the button behind the button here. I have this sort of animated picture, right? And now the problem in Power BI is you actually cannot just simply add um, add pictures that would um, uh, that would animate uh, in like animated you know animated gif pictures they actually do not run in power bi so you need to so this behind this this little animation uh, behind it it's it's not really a picture element so i did not click here insert and um, insert the image, but I actually inserted a, a visual, like a native Power BI visual, and then uh, this is really an ugly workaround. So you basically, uh, in order to get animations to Power BI, you basically need to add a Power BI visual. Well, more or less any kind of chart, you know, I just used, you know, this one, and then you go to the settings and then you set the plot area <laughs> so in the plot area of the chart, you can add an image, right? So this is like a background image in the plot area of the visual. And here you can add, um, add a picture, uh, add this, this picture. And then this picture here, if it's animated, uh, you know, animated GIF, it will actually play, uh, play in, in Power BI. So this is the trick how you, you know, put animated pictures. So for example, if I click now, this button will open. You see the bookmark with uh, a couple of those elements. This is another simple Power BI button, so it will actually take me to the next bookmark. And this bookmark now again has, uh, you know, a text box behind it. And this here, again, this animation here, this element, it's not really a picture. It's a chart. Again, it's it's the visual that has this. Um, plot area enabled and in the plot area you see I have this animated GIF right so this is how how I have managed to put the uh, the, the the animations in in this help button um, I have also used the the shadows as you see I'm not sure if you're uh, if you're you know familiar the um, um, May version of Power BI so uh, uh, well, actually, yesterday the um, yesterday uh, the June version was uh, released of of Power BI Desktop, but in the May version, so so a month ago, uh, Power BI actually added the option to add shadows to add shadows uh, to any visual. So if you if you just you know select the visual, you will see that you now have this is only available in the May version and of course in the um, online um, Power BI online you have those shadows here so you can actually enable the shadow this will just you know this will just bring bring in this uh, like a shadow effect a little bit of material design okay so I have used this one and everything else is just normal buttons and and and, and, and bookmarks here um, all right so this was the um, um let's just if you click click anywhere else it'll actually uh, go back um and then Andre, here if i can uh, yeah. interrupt you for a second of course yeah just go ahead um i have a question um from uh, sandeep in the chat um he's wondering if you can uh, show the the m code for prepping the data also yeah absolutely i will i'll also do that so yeah okay. absolutely so Great, thanks. Yeah, first, first, just let me explain the, uh, you know, the, the front end and the then visual. I'll go okay. back and I'll, I'll show you the M code uh, as well. Okay, okay we'll get so there. This is, uh, this is then the visual. So basically I just have one big visual. This is the Zebra BI charts visual. 
So this, this, you know, all of these functions, like now I can click, you know, the Microsoft and so on. This is all done by the Zebra BI visual. So, you know, this was really quickly done. Uh, let me just show you. So I have the companies. So basically I just calculated, um, I calculated a, a few things. So I'll show you how I, how I got the data. I actually got the data for, um, um, uh, for all the companies, uh, like the opening, um, opening value of, of the stock price and closing value and high, high and low and open and close. And then I have just simply calculated um, the change uh, from the first selected date. OK, so this is, you know, the uh, actually the cumulative cumulative change from from the selected date here. And this is actually the only um, the only DAX measure that I'm using here. So this is now in my in my visual here. So I just put this change uh, measure here and uh, yeah, the category. So I have dates uh, in my chart and then the Zebra BI visual uh, can render multiple um, charts. If you just simply take, you know, for example, the list of all the companies, which is another table with 200 elements, I just put it here into the grouping field and this will now produce um, the visual, so you see, this is all done within the Zebra BI visual. So this part, the visualization part, was quite quite easy. I just used the Zebra BI has um, different types of charts, so you know you can actually just click here on this. Uh, we call it the uh, chart chart slider, right? Uh, this now looks really ugly. This is this is the dot chart. So we have we have you know um, different types types of charts that you can simply change. Uh, change here so i have used the area chart for that and okay how did i get the data this was actually the part that took the most uh, yeah the uh, most the most time i would say in preparing this uh, this dashboard uh, so let's take a peek uh, behind behind the scenes um, all right, so this will get a sl maybe slightly complicated, but it's it's really not so complicated. So I mean, the basis here, um, the problem is, of course, that you know we needed to scrape 200, uh, 200 companies, which means that you know uh, we actually needed to 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 have two hundred queries. So that's why we just made uh, we just put um, the the uh, the scraping part of. Of, of this into uh, into a function um, into into a function so for example if I now click here on the advanced editor just to show you the M code um, we just simply you know uh, developed a um, M function uh, we, this this is the name of the function get get data right and what it does is it takes a parameter uh, a parameter uh, which is actually um, which is actually here. So so this one gets gets data, and um, the the text. Um, uh, so this 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 part here it uh, uses the uh, uh, symbol of the company, and then it just simply constructs the whole uh, URL parameters. So so this is the source of the data here. So basically, you know, um, we are uh, we are using the, the 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 CSV document from the web content. So this this is what you get if you simply click in Power BI and click you know get data from the web. You know, just get from the web, and then you know you need to enter your uh, source of the page URL uh, of the page that you are scraping the data from, and here. Uh, here we simply just made a parameter that then um, concatenates the symbol, the symbol of of the uh, uh, um, company for the data, right? So, for example, this I could uh, replace this with. Uh, so you can just imagine it as uh, this would be like, a, for example, Microsoft like that, and then Google and so on. So this is you know this is the stock uh, symbol. And then it also has two parameters, two more parameters uh, for this particular query to get the data from uh, a specific date to the, the specific the, to the specific date here, right? And this date uh, of the data. So let me just show you now the uh, the actual web page where we are doing this from. 
sorry. So this is uh, this is the page. So this is you know Yahoo Finance, and then you see, then you have those symbols of of the data, and you know this is now like the data for Microsoft, of course, for any other symbol like for for Google. Sorry, Google. You know, it's the G O O G, right? So you see, and it's it's actually the same page, but it just changes the um, the parameters here. Uh, you know, uh, the parameters, right? So so we just made this function that would uh, take those two hundred um, two hundred um, symbols and then. In a function, just load one by one, load each and every company from from the web page, right? So, so this function that I have just shown now, that takes the data, it's actually called uh, called in a loop for 200 companies. So, so we needed to construct a simple table. So this is my table of the companies, and we just did this uh, more or less by by hand, right? I mean, we scraped this, um, you know. We actually curated a list of 200 companies, um, you know, so we needed to find the right symbol here and then, you know, uh, the name of the company. We also added the uh, market capitalization of the company. So those companies in the report are actually sorted by, you know, by the market cap capitalization. So this is this is the, the trick behind how we actually sorted. We got, you know, uh, Saudi Aramco and Apple and Microsoft and Google, you know, and Amazon, Facebook, the, the biggest companies, how, how we got the sort order. So we just use this column for the uh, sort order. So this company is uh, sorted by the market capitalization. And we also added the manual rank actually based upon the market capitalization for that. Um, and uh, yeah. So this is the list of, of the companies. And now this um, function is called 200 times, you know, for, for, for each row, this function in M is called to get, to get the data. And uh, yeah, and then behind it, there are some more, a few more, um, a few more problems uh, that we needed to solve, um, that we needed to solve because, uh, certain uh, like um, the, the, there were some additional problems um, in the time series because um, like you know US companies and Western companies uh, they all operate on the same weekend so for example the stock markets are closed on Saturday and Sunday whereas you know for Arabian companies for example Saudi Aramco and also Israeli and and so on so in certain parts of the world um, the weekends are not Saturday and Sunday. They're actually Friday and Saturday. So we just um, we just did a couple of other hacks uh, to uh, synchronize the dates across the 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 whole you know all 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 the companies. Um, all right. So basically, this this query now takes the list of companies and basically just uh, then. Uh, removes everything just to get, you know, the symbol, the symbol, so that so that I get the symbol, and then um, the uh, this uh, this, this um, symbol is then um, expanded with a custom function that takes the uh, um, takes you see uh, the the stock quote and pulls scrapes the data scrapes the data with this. Um, um, with this web dot uh, contents um, function here, so this is basically the. Uh, I hope that answers the uh, you know question. So if you if you want, I can just uh, I can just copy and paste the uh, the code here. So if I, if you know you will do something similar, let me uh, let me actually paste this into. Uh, into the chat window, so you can maybe do this on your own if you want to play around. All right. Yeah, thanks, uh, okay. Andrei, for the for the M code. There's also a question if the the PBIX file will be made available. 
yeah, I can share the PBIX as well. Yeah, yeah. If you if you want to, yeah, I can I can do that. I can do that. So uh, right now the right now it's published here on our web page. So if you go to Zebra BI web page, if you go to the Zebra yeah. BI web page, you will, I will post the link in the in the chat the also. Code. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you will see the code. So let me yeah okay let me copy and paste this code as well. So so here we do have a, the embed code. So if you go here, uh, if you just want to share this analysis, you know, feel free to um, to copy and paste the the iframe. Um, so let me paste this as well here. All right, so this is the page. And then for the PBIX file, uh, please just get back to me. Um, just write, uh, write write me an email. So let me also paste this. So this is my email. Please just, just you know, write to me. Oh, sorry, I have a text expander here. Too much, I'm using too much software. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, all right, that's it. And uh, so this is my email. Feel free to reach out, reach out to me if you need the uh, PBIX file or, or or anything, anything else. Um, yeah. So that was just you know. I just wanted to to have this short presentation, um, explain how we did this, and uh, now I guess it's a good time to maybe ask some some questions. Uh, you know, happy to. I'm happy to uh, provide more details. Uh, if you're interested, like in the front end or M code or anything else, just let me know if you have further questions. Yeah, there's not um, uh, many questions um, in the chat right now. We answered a few uh, already. Um, just uh, Sandeep is saying um, that th there's not much docs uh, used. It shows the it, it just shows yeah, the power of Zebra BI uh, visuals. So it's a easy. Yeah, big, uh, yeah, yeah. That's the that's the uh, that's the advantage of Zebra BI because you know I I really just needed uh, I really just needed the percent change. So this is actually more or less all the decks that I have used here. So. I just yeah. divided, you know, the closing. So I, I pulled the closing, uh, the closing values, and I'm just using like the, uh, I'm just dividing the closing value. So the, the closing value on on the date here by the uh, closing value of the first selected date in my in you know in the uh, date date field that I'm using as a slicer on, on top of the dashboard. So this is this is the whole this is the whole DAX here. So just you know one calculates and uh, I calculate the closing value. I just basically get the closing date, date uh, value from the first date of uh, in in my. Uh, in my date field, actually, uh, so I, I did. I did need to, you know, um, I did need. Uh, I, I actually have some uh, also a calendar, and I have used the calendar um, for for some tricks uh, to get the the data of the companies, um, just to synchronize the the weekends of of the companies. But I did that uh, more or less in in M. Uh, basically, I did that in M. Yeah, so not not much and tax that's, here. Okay, there's one question around uh, licensing. If if there's any additional licensing of of the Zebra BI uh, visual necessary. Um, yeah, the, the so the, the Zebra BI visuals are available um, on the app source. So if you just go here and click get more visuals, you can actually uh, get the free version of Zebra BI. So just just type Zebra BI. And we actually have two visuals. So the, the, I have used this one. This is the Zebra BI chart that can render different types of, of charts. So simply just add this visual. And then, the, um, then there's also another visual um, which we call Zebra BI tables. Uh, so you can also add this one. So the basic version is free. Uh, the basic version is free and it also renders small multiples. So you will be able to uh, like you know display 200 charts and so on, but not but then you will not have in the free version 
um, the uh, like advanced settings are um, um, are uh, not 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 available, right? So so you cannot uh, do certain things. So so certain settings are only available in the pro version. So I have used the pro version here because I needed to change like like the design, right? Uh, for example, here exactly how you know we have things like the variance area opacity. So exactly as as you see here, right? There are like details details like in the chart. You have this so-called uh, so-called difference highlight. So, for example, this, this this change here, right, is actually displayed um, by the visual. That's why I don't need any decks basically because uh, I'm using this difference highlight. Um, so this is this this last uh, this dot here, and there's some you know there's design here, so you can basically change it from like I don't know the arrow, so you can have an arrow. Um, like that, so you see, so Zebra BI has all those options. So I basically just used yep. a couple of design options here for that. So uh, this is not available in the in the uh, free version, like to change exactly the arrow styles and 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 so on. But um, you should get uh, the, uh, the 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 charts and small multiples going. So so this is called the small multiple, right? Rendering of of multiple charts within the same visual and all scaled. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, we have a few um, more questions um, uh, coming right. in. So, um, I'll start with um, Edmund. Um, he asked, could you show one more time how you scroll multiple visuals in time at once? Um, yeah, I mean, this is just done by, by the Zebra BI visual. Uh, so uh, let me just... Uh, let me just show you. So for example, if I just say 12, now I have the um, um, okay. So this is uh, so this is the uh, this is the Zebra BI visual. This is the Zebra BI visual. So it basically has you just add. So let me just delete everything, right? So basically, this is the Zebra BI visual. This this one, the Zebra BI chart, and then you just add the measure. So in my case, it's this change of change from the first date. And then you, then I basically just added the date, I, I think, and actually not not the whole heart, not the just the plain date. Um, so now I have you know the data for all the dates. So this is in my y, in my x axis here, the categories, and then I just um, took the companies from my list of companies. So this is the table with 200 companies, and just pull pull this here. That's it. <laughs> so, yeah. so this part was really, I mean, <laughs> that was the easiest part. And now the Zebra BI, uh, uh, Zebra BI charts visual just renders everything, you know, automatically. And you yeah. have several types of charts. So for example, this would be the line chart. And of course, then you can, you know, tweak the design. So I did need to tweak the design a little bit, you know, uh, the colors and, and things like that, but uh, more or less, you know, you can just change any color. So I, I did spend some, some time for this. Uh, I guess, but not 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 much. I would say. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Pretty powerful. Yeah. Um, and another question from um, um, uh, from Sandeep. Uh, he says, "Hi, Andre. Um, could you show some customization options available in Zebra BI visuals? I think you already showed a few, like the, the um, arrows." Yeah, there are there are lots. Out. Yeah, there are lots of them. I mean, uh, maybe just just quickly, right? So um, let me uh, let me let me show you a more normal example. I would say so. Uh, this is this is like a sales dashboard that that I have here. My computer is so slow. I'm not sure what's going on now. Uh, so hopefully I'll be able to do this. So so we have two visuals. The first one is the uh, Zebra BI charts. Basically, this charts visual renders um, things like like for example, just um, I'll break this down by month. So this is a more normal example. Now I have like uh, 12 months here, and the uh, for example, just quickly do a slicer. So this would be a normal use case for for Zebra BI, I guess. You know, just some sort of monthly monthly charts or something let's do a drop down here so this would be like for 
for the year of 2018. And now this chart is rendered. Of course, Zebra, Zebra BI uh, renders many types of charts. So you have all of those charts. So you see, I use this one, uh, the plus minus area chart in my in, in that case. But you know, you have all of those charts. And some of them are only available with the pro license. But most of them are actually available uh, with the normal license. And then um, uh, the beauty of this is that you can then do a comparison. Like, for example, typically, you know, in a, in you would compare like actual to previous year or actual to plan. This, this is this is the real case where Zebra BI really is is very very powerful. So, for example, this chart and th this is also this is a free version. So you get the waterfall chart, which is you know like this is the previous year or plan, and then you know this is the this year. And then you have certain growth rate here. So this is all done by Zebra BI. This this calculation here, you get the growth rates, and then you can click. All right. So well, certain things like you cannot, you cannot like you cannot do the axis break, for example. But you know you, you do have most of the most of the charts here. The visuals are also completely uh, responsive. And then they have this this uh, this um, uh, option to to have the the uh, the small multiples. So basically, you just um, let me just do a simple chart and then you just bring, uh, you know, another data field into the grouping. So like, for example, business units or maybe this is too much, uh, the groups like something like that. And you see the visual does this completely automatically. Right. And now I have all the charts and again, you can, you know, switch between the different chart types of charts. Now here with the small multiples, the free version is a little bit more limited, but um yeah you yeah. can do it like okay that. and you can request a, a a free a free trial also so uh you get 30 days of uh of the pro license as well to unlock it and play play around for more okay. advanced that's cool okay, so um cool. well looking at the time um i think we can do one uh, one more question and then Perfect. um uh, finish up um, Edward uh, has a question, uh, maybe I missed it, but can you also sort by uh, ascending or descending, um, for example, the highest or lowest current percentage? So the dox measure uh, that you created? Yeah, I mean, um, um, for the percentage, I did not, I, 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 I did not implement that. So at the moment, at the moment, it's sorted by the, um, uh, by the market capitalization. Um, so this is done in uh, this is done in Power BI. Let um, me just quickly show you. So so at the moment it's it's not possible to um, oh, or is this? It's not possible to sort by the. Uh, I would need to just add this option. So I mean the, the Zebra BI has has many options to sort. So for example here in Zebra BI visual you know you you have many options how to sort and basically basically you have the option to sort descending ascending or original order which means that you are actually using the order set in the in Pavi. so in my case I'm, I'm using this original order because uh i'm using the uh, because my company field is sorted by the um it's sorted you see here, it's sorted by this rank, and this rank at the moment is uh, just the same as the market capitalization um, sorted descending. But I could use this rank for something else, like you know, for the fastest growing or something like that. So I'd probably do it like that. Um, I would just need to change the, the the rank function here, I guess. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Great, uh, Andre. Thanks for uh, for sharing. Showing this uh, this cool uh, report and dashboard. Thanks, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me, uh, and have a have a great day ahead of you, and enjoy the other presentation. Thanks, guys. Yes, thank you. Um, I also uh, pasted uh, the feedback form uh, again in the chat if you'd uh, like to um, fill that in. That would be nice. Um, we will now have a few minutes of a break uh, around three. So we will start at 12.45 sharp uh, with the next uh, presentation of uh, Intion. So uh, grab something to drink, maybe something to eat also, and uh, we'll be right back.
Hallo Nicky. Hi Indian. Je hoort mij. Oh, ja. I'm doing very well. Thank you. I heard you yesterday speak in Milano. Ah ja, dat is true. My new uh, my new session uh, of Power Platform Better Together, ja. Yeah. Ja. Yeah. It's nice how you can get along uh, all along the world uh, sitting in your desk at home. Ja. Yeah. <coughs> that's uh, a little bit easier right now in these times, so. Ja. Yeah. That's one good thing that uh, came of this. Mm -hmm. So we will um, wait one minute and then uh, we can start. Thank you very much. I will start sharing my screen, I guess. Uh, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Well, I have just the screen too. That is, yes. So that would pop up now, I guess. Do you see a PowerPoint now? Uh, yeah, it's here. Yeah. If you uh, can wait one second. Yes, uh, of course. I'm just uh, waiting for Mark, uh, Lady Val, to. Uh, um, to stop the recording uh, for the previous session. That's it's easier uh, in the long run. Right. And we can start a new recording uh, for your session.